Hi, in this video we're going to do repetitive rotational transformations of a leaf using matrices. I did another video for this a long time ago, but the multiplication was not specific for linear algebra courses, and so it was in reverse order. This one, I'm going to put it in the way that linear algebra courses do multiply with the transformational matrix times whatever our points are. First of all, to get our rotational matrix, we start with our elementary matrix here, and we're going to go ahead and see how it transforms. So if I take this column, which is 1, 0, and this column, 0, 1, I want these two points and see where they map to. So I have them on the coordinate axis system here. If I want to rotate this, say, for instance, some angle theta, and then this one would also be some angle theta, what's going to happen is that I come up with a new point when I did that rotation. If I can figure out what that point is, that's going to be my new transformational matrix that will rotate whatever points that we have to this new figure from here to here. Or if I was up here, then it'd be from here to here. Or if I was from here to here. Everything would get rotated by that amount. So one zero, I wanna change that going from here and move it up to here. Well, what's the coordinates of that new point? Well, if I did my right triangle here correctly, I translate it by theta. And so then this is going to be cosine of theta, and then this one would be sine of theta. So my x would be cosine of theta, my y would be sine of theta. So that's what I'm going to put right here. Take one zero, and it's going to map to cosine sine. Okay, so now this one, zero, one. This point is zero, one. I put that over there, but it's right here. This is zero, one. This got rotated over to this point. Well, how am I going to represent that point? Well, off of theta, this, these two triangles are going to be the same. In fact, I drew it again here, and so that this angle is theta, but regardless, what we can do is base this off of theta. And if we look at this, this height of this triangle is going to be the same as this one right here. So my y-coordinate is going to be cosine theta. And then if I look at my x-coordinate, what does my zero get mapped to? Well, it goes over here. Well, that short side is equivalent to this, ang this side right here. So that would be the sine of theta. But I'm going left, so it would be negative sine theta. So zero gets mapped to negative sine theta. And my one gets mapped to cosine theta, which is this one. My drawing didn't turn out as well as planned, but hopefully you can see that one zero maps to cosine sine and zero one maps to negative sine cosine respectively, right? So this will be my new transformational matrix. If I wanna rotate anything 30 degrees, I'm gonna multiply by this matrix or this matrix times that, that uh, whatever points I have and that's gonna turn out. So let's go to the spreadsheet. Excel works better for this, but you can try it on Google, Google Sheets if you want. I'm using Excel. So I'm just gonna start with some points. So I'm gonna start off with zero, zero. So I already kind of laid these out so I know what this is gonna look like. So type in those points. And what we wanna do with this is that we want to go ahead and make a little scattered diagram with this. And so I don't have this showing up, so I'll bring this down, but I want to insert a drawing, and this is a scatter diagram. Now, if you're using a different uh, version of this, or you're using Google, whatever, you gotta find out where it is. But I wanna do a scatter gram, scatter graph, and I want to do it with straight lines and no dots. You can decide what you want, and sometimes the smooth one is really nice too. But I'm going to do that. And so that's kind of our petal, called a petal or leaf of a, of a flower. Petal sounds better. And what we're going to do is try to rotate that. And so that's our goal. So I'm going to put a rotational matrix in here. Well, oh, let's just start off with the identity. So it's 1, 0, and then 0, 1. So anything that was 1, 0 will stay, well, everything will just stay where it is if I do this multiplication. Now what I want to do is go over here and multiply all this stuff out. We can do it one by one using multiplication or there is a formula, set formula inside Excel that will help you do this. If you want to, you could go ahead and take and go across here, multiply each one of these respectively by each one of these respectively. 
and then go ahead and add them and then take these two and multiply by these two respectively and then you're going to get the new coordinates for our first point right here and then just fill right and that will work i'm going to go ahead and just do the operation from the the pre-can operation you can do it either way though so i'm going to go here and i'm going to go equals matrix multiplication m mult and i want to look at this so when i put that parenthesis i get array and array the first array is what i'm starting with so i'm going to take the first matrix that i'm using and i'm going to multiply it by the new matrix which would be right here now this doesn't always work for everybody so you have to maybe highlight all of the cells that are, it's going to go into but on mine it always works so i don't know what the hang up is exactly but i'm going to go from this corner and put a colon to this corner and that will tell me my first array then i'm going to put a comma then i do the same thing over here with a colon so i type colon and then it's going to go over to here so that would be my two arrays that i do have close it off with parentheses and that's going to give me matrix multiplication if it happens right it's going to fill in all these new spots and sure enough it did for me and they're identical to what i had now in order to expand this out so i can see this i can click on the chart when i click on the chart in the appropriate spot i'm going to see the highlighted versions here these are the numbers that go into this chart so when i get this open box here i can just click and drag and move it over and it's going to plot both of those since i did the identity it's identically the same so now i want to change this to my new rotational matrix that we did at the beginning of this so i need an angle measurement let's say that for instance we're going to start with 30. i don't know what's going there i want it here so we get 30 in a1 our computer doesn't deal with degrees and so we're going to change it over to radians so we're going to go equal to we're going to take that a1 and multiply it by pi you have to put pi and then open parentheses close parentheses and then you're going to divide by 180. and then there is my representation of 30 degrees in radians and here we said now this one was i can't remember you can go back and look but i i got it equals cosine of my angle measurement so that's going to be of a2 this one's going to be the sine negative sine negative sine of a2 and i should be going down since those are vectors but i accidentally did it this way sine of a2 here and then this one would be cosine of a2 and i forgot to put equal And so then there is my transformational matrix. Now, if you look at this, this rotated around. My scale is off here a little bit, so it's kind of messing with me somewhat. But let's see if we can get this and make sure that this does work properly. So I put in 10 degrees, and then that looks like it's probably working okay. So I can change this number to 15 if I wish. Oh, wrong number. So I go Control Z. And this one 15, sorry about that. And so then we can change it a little bit. Not so interesting. So let's go ahead and see if we can do this repetitively. I promise repetitive transformation, so let's do that. So I'm gonna go here and where I started, I'm gonna take that new one and I'm gonna go keep on going out. But I do have to change this a little bit. This matrix right here is the matrix I always use. This matrix, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take these points, multiply to get here. Then I'm going to take these points to multiply the next one, and so on and so on. So these will always change. These will always stay the same. In Excel, how to make them all stay the same, you put a dollar sign before you start. So I'm going to put a dollar sign here, and I can put it in the A3 too if I wish, but I really don't want the A's or the B's changing. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in each one of those. Since I use the matrix multiplication one, that's going to change all of these to the dollar sign. So see, everything changed. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab these few. And I'm going to grab this little handlebar. See how my plus sign changes? And when it changes, I'm going to go. And here we go. 
Keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. We're gonna go way out there. Uh, this seems kind of really far. So that we went way out. Now what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna go ahead and change our graph as well. So I got my colors here. I go here until I can box that in. And then I'm gonna go way out. It was somewhere in M for the first digit. Way, way out, way, way, way out there. Okay, so there we go. Now if I go back to where I was, look at that, isn't that pretty? So that was 15 degrees, so I can change this to 30. Now we, and then we get things coinciding, that's why, why we actually get less petals. If we do something that is not divisible by 360, then things go a little haywire. So think about extensions. How do we extend this thing? Well, what I did was I said, okay, I want a random number between zero and 90 degrees. So I'm gonna go equal 90 times a random number. This random number generator on a computer system, some of you are familiar with this, but it will generate any number between zero and one. So if it's zero, we'll go with zero degrees. If it's one, it's gonna be 90 and there's gonna be everything in between. So I'm gonna do that and then that's gonna give me a random number. Cool, and so I can go FN, F9. So if you do the F9 button on most computers, it should change and randomize what's going on. If yours doesn't, you can change any cell on the spreadsheet and it should change. Okay, that's pretty interesting, that's cool. How about if I change these? I wanna do this one as 10 times a random number. So this is gonna be any random number between zero and one could be decimal, whatever, 10 rand, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill that down. So all of these first ones, don't go too far, I'm only gonna go up to the zero, and I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. There we go, so that's a cool graph. Well, do you want more? Yeah, go ahead and randomize. So we do F9, and now all of a sudden we get all these kind of cool designs. That one did seem rotational too much. Don't know what happened there. And so I could sit here and play with this for a long time, but all we're doing is randomizing these points and then rotating them. Cool? All right, that's your little introduction to transformational matrices, and in this case, a rotational matrix that is just based upon taking the I and the J and rotating them, and then that will rotate all of our points wherever we start, and then it'll rotate each one of them as we go around. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. This is fun for me. I hope you find half as much, at least half as much fun as I do. Have a great day.